Does Michigan have the best blueberries on earth? Is it true that there's a lake monster that lives in Lake Erie? And where the hell did all the car makers go? We're gonna answer those questions and more. So take out both hands and get ready to show everybody what part of the state you're from as we get ready to unbox the great state of Michigan. Alrighty, let's get started here. Let's turn that off. Michigan's a really big state with a wide range of geographical features, things to do, and really cool people. To really understand Michigan, you have to know what types of people live where. You can break Michigan up into a few different types of areas. Southern Michigan is basically all rednecks and truck driving hunters who can't wait to bag a deer. You have some really pretty coastal communities along Lake Michigan, some of which are full of snobs like in Grand Haven or are really ghetto like in Benton Harbor. There's Metro Detroit, which has wannabe gangsters, and then Detroit proper, which is gangsters. Then you have more rednecks and fishermen the further north you get until you might as well be in Canada. Michigan almost touches Canada, but the two are separated entirely by water of some sort. It's not always easy to cross the border to get back and forth between Michigan and Canada. Anybody who tries to cross may get into trouble. As far as the residents of the geographically complicated state are concerned, there are two Michigans, Michigan and Northern Michigan, or as the rednecks up here in the sticks like to say, the UP. This part of Michigan is called the Upper Peninsula, and it has the most hardcore rednecks of all. Up here, people could live off the grid, and in fact, many do. There's a lot of Packer fans, redneck Eskimos, huge mosquitoes, and beer drinkers way up here. The folks here are called Youpers. Youpers are tough. Most lower Michigan residents couldn't stand the forces of nature way up here in no man's land. And most people in the UP would beat up people in lower Michigan in a fight, plain and simple. They get a lot of snow up here, about 80 inches a year in many parts. Do Youpers have deer leg nunchucks? You betcha. Michigan as a state has the third most hunters per capita, where one in 10 residents hunts. But in the UP, 100% of the people hunt, even the women. It's not just the Youpers though. A lot of Michigan residents are very outdoorsy. This state is full of backpackers, kayakers, hikers, and of course, rednecks. Let's demonstrate this fact. Hello? It's hunting season. There's a lot of good hardy Americans like that in Michigan. Considering it's kind of redneck culture, politically, it's a red state. Outside of the Detroit metro area, Michiganders elected Donald Trump as president. This state had supported Democratic candidates in each presidential election from 1992 until 2012. So Michigan may be headed more and more red over time. Overall, many Michiganders are patriotic and responsible Americans. The opposite of that is Detroit. It's one of the worst places in the country. That's undeniable. Of course, Detroit people will remind you that their city is trying to make a comeback, which is true. Certain areas of downtown look much better. And going back to 1985, Detroit's violent crime rate has come down dramatically. This chart shows it's down by almost 60% over the last 35 years. What's interesting is that its population has also gone down by about 60%. Detroit's population was 1.8 million at one point, and now it's under 700,000. The main reason, much of the region was employed by car companies who left the area. Despite the reduced crime numbers, Detroit is still unsurprisingly eerie, uncertain, and a little lawless. The suburbs of Detroit have suffered so much economic decline that entire neighborhoods have been abandoned and resemble a prairie more than a housing development. This neighborhood here was filmed just four miles from downtown Detroit. The city's actively removing entire neighborhoods like this for good, and it seems to be working in terms of lower crime rates and overall blight. After we went through this neighborhood and posted a video, many Detroit residents told us that's not even the worst part of Detroit, and we needed to see the east side. That looks like this. Despite its huge reduction in crime, Detroit's violent crime rate is second only to St. Louis. So why did the car makers leave Detroit? In the 1920s, the automobile industry was beginning to grow, and soon, Detroit had more car builders than anywhere else in America. 
But there were a couple of world wars, gas prices skyrocketed, and the rest of the world started making good cars too. Better cars even. By the 70s and 80s, the big three were financially struggling. Then the car companies built robots to replace a lot of the people. Eventually, the whole city of Detroit filed for bankruptcy in 2011. And of course, there's Flint, which has also struggled to stay economically relevant when car companies left the state. Flint is always towards the top five in America in terms of dangerous cities per capita. To make matters worse, Flint's municipal water supply is lacking in drinkability and has been for years. Look at this map. While the rest of the state enjoys tap water, one tiny section of the state drinks bottled water. Flint residents are also very territorial and don't like much being looked at under a microscope. They stick together and defend their city and seem to be somewhat optimistic, at least the ones with jobs. Because of its unique geographical shape, Michigan has more total freshwater shoreline than any other state. On the left is Lake Michigan, which separates Michigan from Wisconsin and Chicago. Up north is Lake Superior, which separates Michigan from Canada. It's very cold and large. Then there's Lake Huron, which is Lake Huron, and Lake Erie, which is Lake Erie. The Great Lakes contain more than 80% of North America's and more than 20% of the world's surface fresh water supply. Many Michigan residents boat on these lakes and jump off into them from tall rocks. Two other interesting facts, Michigan's the only place in the world with a floating post office and the lakes around Michigan have a large goldfish population because Michigan people get them as pets and then let them go. These lakes are also dangerous. There's some really big fish in them. And in 1793, rumors started circulating of a 40 foot long monster in Lake Erie named Bessie. Not to be confused with the 40 foot long lake monster Nessie from Scotland. Whether Bessie is still swimming around up here or not, the Great Lakes undoubtedly contain unfathomable secrets. Within Lake Michigan, there is a triangle with a similar reputation to the Bermuda Triangle, where a large amount of strange disappearances have occurred. There have also been alleged UFO sightings, and large ships have sunk here. There's quite a few nice beaches in Michigan, especially along the Lake Michigan shoreline. The coastal community of Grand Haven is charming. Saugatuck is famous for its beach dunes. Traverse City was once called the second best small town travel destination in America. They also make cherries here. These coastal communities are a big reason tourists spend $17.2 billion per year in the state. The rest of Michigan? Pretty boring. Lots of country roads, rolling hills, and trees. Outside of a handful of metro areas like Grand Rapids, Lansing, and Battle Creek, it's just a bunch of euchre players. That's a card game they play here. It's confusing and hard to learn. Speaking of Battle Creek, let's talk about Michigan's economy. Battle Creek's home to some of the biggest cereal companies in the world. Kellogg, Post, and Ralston all make Battle Creek the best place to wake up in on Saturday morning. You can't have cereal without milk, right? No, Mappy, you cannot. Why do you say that, little guy? Because Michigan produces the sixth most milk in the U.S. I didn't know that. I'll bet Wisconsin makes the most milk in the country. So how are you, Mappy? How are you handling the fact that your wife is officially our new co-host? I hope she does well. She needs a little help, but she's learning fast. I hope she stops hanging out with Juan. I've seen them together a lot more lately. Uh-oh. Well, I hope Mrs. Mappy certainly isn't hanging around with Juan again. That would be one big mistake. So Michigan makes cereal and milk, that's cool. It's also the seventh biggest exporter in the US and is a leader in producing blueberries, corn, soybeans, grapes, and apples. Michigan's economy has been doing very well in the last 10 years, led by gains in the manufacturing industry and construction. That's great. Other areas to touch on, the capital of Michigan is Lansing. Right next door is East Lansing. It's home to Michigan State University, which is really good at basketball. And that's all there is to really say about Lansing. Ann Arbor is a breeding ground for young, educated professionals. There's a place called Holland in Michigan that has a fascinating Dutch-based culture. Michigan's closest neighbors within the U.S. are Wisconsin, Ohio, and Indiana. Of the three, there's one state that people in Michigan do not like at all. Can you guess which state that is? We'll talk more about that when we get into the sports. People in Detroit are from 
Michigan is so awesome. You can go watch the Lions lose every single game that they play. You can also see some pretty lakes and you can tell your friends where you live by holding up your hands. Okay. Okay, moving on, we're going to talk about Michigan's climate. Michigan is situated smack dab in the Midwest, which means schizo weather patterns and freaky storms. They get so much snow, they use what are called youper scoopers to move the piles of snow off their roofs so they don't cave in. Winters are harsh, and if you don't have a snowblower or some good muscle, then you better have cases of beer stocked up. Most Michigan residents drink quite a bit of beer, especially in the wintertime. You can count on it being cold for a lot of the year up here, but Michigan's weather is quite diverse. Ask any Michigander what the weather's like, and it's hard to tell since it changes so often. The going joke up here is that there are two seasons in Michigan, winter and construction. Did you know Michigan is called the Wolverine State? I did know that already, Mrs. Mappy. That's not because there's a lot of Wolverines here, though. In fact, there aren't any here anymore. Many Michigan residents have said it's time to change the state's nickname for good since the Wolverine doesn't even live here anymore, and since it's such a nasty creature. So I heard you were hanging out with Juan. There he is. What are you doing here on this channel? I help Mrs. Mappy. You help her? Do what? Make more babies? That kid looks like a cross between a map and some Juan who isn't Mappy. Don't you harass Juan. He's very sweet. Okay, well, I don't want to talk to you guys about it, and I hope Juan isn't spending your paycheck. You just got this job. You should probably focus on work right now. Okay, they're gone. Whatever. What about the sports in Michigan? Well, football season's a big deal, where most of the southern part of the state cares about the Lions, while the UP roots on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. And the Michigan-Michigan State rivalry among residents here can break up families in both football and basketball. But that's nothing compared to the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry. Everyone in Michigan agrees that Ohio State sucks and their fans can all fall into a big pothole and disappear for good. Of course, being in a state with frozen lakes everywhere, you'd expect hockey to be huge here. In fact, there are more kids who play hockey in Michigan than in any other state. As such, there are lots of Red Wings fans everywhere here. Baseball isn't really that big a deal, mostly because the Tigers stink. The Detroit Pistons, led by Isaiah Thomas, Dennis Rodman, Bill Lanebeer, Rick Mahorn, and John Sally were known as the Bad Boys. They won two NBA titles in 1989 and 1990. Michigan has a lot going on. With an interesting history and loads of natural resources and wonders, there's a lot here that will open your eyes and offer experiences. We could go on and on about Michigan's various things of note. We didn't talk about the lighthouses or the music history here or how everyone shops at Meijer or even have time to talk about why everybody drives 90 miles an hour everywhere. But we promised a short video and we gotta go. It looks like it's about to snow in August. The end. Hey guys, if you learned something new or you just liked this video, make sure to like it. And if you really like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get all of our videos about what it's like to live in different places in America. Peace.